Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101 and today we're going to be looking at how to destroy objects using geometry nodes or something like this. I have a, another example here. I just changed the interior material to be like a crystal material. Let's see how you can achieve that. Project files are going to be in the description on my Gumroad Patreon and YouTube membership. So the great thing about this technique is that uh, I can change the fracturing at any time. So for example, I have this controller object that I can move around. I can just add it here and destroy that area. I can snap it here, destroy that area. Just, I like this procedure nature of uh, this uh, because this is not something you can do using a uh, rigid body. So I can, yeah, and uh, there's a bunch of parameters you can adjust. So the first thing I'm going to do is so fracture this. So uh, I'm going to first set up two materials. One is going to be for the outside and another for the inside. So I'll just create a new one, call it inside and just give it a darker color. Now I can go under object quick effects. So fracture and uh, use own vertices, set the noise to one interior material and uh, the collection to be int. You can also set an internal interior vertex group. Hit OK and uh, we should have something like that. These are too large. So let's try fracturing again. Let's use 500 pieces. Okay, I'm good with that. I can hide the original object. Now we have our fracture, the materials are set and we have this in a collection called int. I'm going to disable that and go to geometry nodes and set up a new geometry nodes. New geometry nodes importing my int collection. Uh, if I look at this, that's what it looks like. What I want to do is add a force that pushes all of these pieces outside like we have an explosion. Now to do that, I will need to create a force based on the normal direction of the faces. And since these are instances, we can't get normals from them. But since we have the original object, this, which is a mesh, I can just bring it in. And if I preview it, you can see this is what we have. I can capture its normal. If I sample near a surface, I, I want to sample, I want to capture the normal direction of each face and transfer them to these instances since instances don't have normals. Because I want to use the set position and use the normal directly into the offset. This usually, let me make sure I'm previewing this. This usually, uh, I want to use the instances yeah, this usually pushes things out. For example, instead of using a force, if I used something like a noise, a noise texture and plug that into the offset, that usually changes the position of each instance based on the noise. But because these instances are all being treated as a single object, that's why you see the whole thing is moving. To make it so that each instance is treated as an independent instance, we need to check separate children. Uh, that way we get something like that. And uh, we can use a vector math change this operation to scale to play with the, the influence. Now, if you're using a noise, you need to subtract 0.5 on each value to remove uh, the offset. So yeah, this is what we'd have. But using a noise is a bit too chaotic. Uh, it doesn't push things the way I want. That's why I want to use the normal direction of each instance. Because these are instances, they don't have normals. That's why we are capturing or transferring the normals of these faces onto, uh, you can see how these normals look, we want to transfer them onto this geometry. So instead of using this noise, we can use uh, this normal and that will push out everything like that. And uh, this scale is just to help change the strength of our force. So I can frame this, call this normal force and that's great. Now I want to have the same setup that we have here where the explosion is determined by the position of this object of our empty here. So, so to do that, let's add the empty. Let me first set this back to zero. Let's add an empty about here. So I'll use uh, this sphere, sphere, just have it there. We're going to create a fall off that starts from this. And to do that, we, let's import in our empty. I'll call it force. And 
calculate the distance between each instance and the empty. So I can use the position of each instance and just calculate the distance. Uh, if we look at that, I'll uh, we'll get something like that. At, uh, and if I use this as the scale, so I want to have two scales. So one for the strength of our normal force and another for the falloff. So this will go directly into our falloff. And uh, if I add a ramp, a car ramp, I can control the influence just like that. But it seems we are getting the opposite of what we want. So let's flip this to have that. So the explosion is determined by this position. Now, if you want this to be unmated, all you have to do is, before we plug this into the offset, we can add a simulation zone. And we want to use uh, these instances as our geometry and also connect this as our output. It won't change much. Everything still works the same. All we want to do is change the fall off, uh, this fall off. If we can animate that, then uh, let's say, by, let me show you what I mean. If I use a math node here, change it to multiply, you can see how that can be used to animate everything. So what I can do is, is store uh, this, store this data into a named variable or attribute called, let's call it force. And uh, I can just use a named attribute force. Basically you, you add the force to itself within the simulation loop. So if I do a math node and just add this to itself, I can reuse it as the scale and just make sure that, uh, make sure this is set to instances. So now you can see that that works. So basically since this loop runs every frame, we are just adding the fall off to itself, which creates a force that grows. So if I move this here, we get that. If you want this to, because right now it's, it starts off too strong, you can just animate to collide into uh, this object. So you have something like that. But one thing you will note is that these instances are not rotating at all. So what we can do is use, uh, use our rotate instances around here, create a random rotation, use a random rotation. Yeah, but that will also randomize these. But so far, that's good, that's okay. To make sure that the, the unimpacted instances don't rotate, you can just use a mix node, a mix vector vector like this. So at zero, at a value of one, actually you can have this. At value of zero, it, we don't get any rotation and at a value of one, we get rotation, random rotation. And since we have this force attribute, that's best off on the fall off from this object. We can just plug that in directly to the factor. And you see, we get that, the, we get the rotation we want. And if we don't want that to be too strong, what we can do is use another math node here and just multiply it by 0.8 also here. So that, so that is a bit slow, just like that. If you want to create a slow motion effect, that's how you do that. So let's do 0.9. So we can work on materials. Uh, remember, when we created instances, we gave these uh, an, a vertex, an interior vertex group. We can use that. Is attribute named attribute? Uh, I think it's called interior. Yeah, we can use that to to set material. The inside should get that material, and the outside we can just use this 
and remember this is all procedure so I can just have this here and you can see how that plays around and uh, you can even just play with this ramp yeah so that's how I did this but I added obviously a few more details to these uh, than what I'm showing here so like extra small particles that I just created I see I wanted this to be pushed inside turned that into a volume distributed points in that volume and then instanced basically the same collection to get smaller pieces then I just joined them in the inside so you can see this mesh here has smaller pieces in the inside and then I start adding in all the things we have talked about and to make the mesh start out uncracked I just use a switch node a switch between the broken pieces and the original piece I just admit that now I get that um, most of the other things are basically the same thing you can see here I'm calculating yeah and that's how we ended up with this can easily direct where the destruction happens and I think that's amazing can always adjust the fall off every time you just get different results yeah thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video